Welcome back. Here's your long-awaited update on our refit of our Reliance 44 Marcelina. First, some good news. I finally retrieved the screwdriver that was dropped into the bilge of the boat about six months ago. Also, uh, the ever-present pigeons, along with water that condenses on the rafters that the building were stored in and then rains down upon the boat, proved to be a bit of a problem. So I covered the boat in plastic. This creates another problem that in, it makes working on the deck a bit more difficult. But the plastic's necessary until the weather stays consistently above freezing and we don't have the condensation. You can also see that the interior of the boat has been completely gutted, included cutting back the center bulkhead. A new bulkhead about seven inches further aft is going to be put in its place. And I had some help from my son to get the last sections of the old chain plates removed. And of course, after being instructed to use his dust mask properly, he immediately removes his safety glasses. Clearly I failed as a parent. Speaking of safety, I discovered that the structure under the cabin sole, the crossed 2x4s that support the floor, were just set in place. In other words, they weren't secured to the boat itself. So not only does this mean that the subfloor is not adding strength to the hull, it means that if the boat was rolled, the floor and subfloor would literally come crashing down on you. So instead of trying to secure the existing supports in place, I decided to replace them completely. I also had another issue to contend with, and that's the fact that the engine and the water heater stick up about three inches above the current floor level. So I raised this section about three and a half inches, creating a slightly raised platform where the galley will sit. In order to properly secure the new subfloor to the boat, I needed to tab it into the hull. This means I'm using fiberglass and resin to laminate the subfloor to the hull. But first I need to fill some of the voids and round off some of the corners where the wooden frame meets the hull itself. To do this I decided to use a rigid polyurethane foam that comes in two parts and that are mixed together. This foam is a medium density, about four pounds per cubic foot. Dense enough to act as a solid support, but not so dense that I couldn't shape it once it's set up. The tricky part was trying to keep it where I wanted it while it was solidifying. Even after it started becoming less viscous, it was very sticky and made quite a mess. I'll show in my next update how that all turned out. So while the phone was setting up, I moved to the cockpit to try my hand at replacing a section of the coring. I mixed the two-part epoxy and then test fit the polyumac coring material. This is a polypropylene honeycomb material and unlike balsa core, will be impervious to moisture. So I had previously sanded and cleaned the cavity in preparation for application of the epoxy. Now I just need to let the epoxy set before moving to the next stage. So next time I'll show you the rigid foam and the tabbing in of the subfloor to the hull, as well as replacing the top skin of the deck material and prepping the seams. Thanks for watching. Your comments and questions are always welcome. Thanks.